Hello, everybody, and welcome. Congratulations on making it out for what somebody described last night as the hangover session. <laughs> Is that you, Matt? <laughs> the hangover session. But in general, I know these, I've given a lot of talks in the Drupal community, I always know these kinds of ones aren't always as popular with folks because they come a lot of times to conferences like this for the reason, good morning, for the reason of like learning specific skills and and I try and do that in this talk as well but this one is a little bit bigger picture, a little bit more opinion. Close that because I can kind of hear the people next door. So. The main idea that I thought I could share in here, some of my big picture ideas are about ways to look after yourself so you can be an effective Drupal contributor, uh, ways that you can contribute meaningfully and essentially thriving in our community. So some of these ideas came from <laughs> Owen with me. I, I've, I've taken our slides and adapted them. These were his slides, so I reused, I reused a couple of them. We gave a similar talk at DrupalCon, but I decided to make this a little bit more better. No, I'm just kidding, Owen, if you're listening. I decided to make a little bit more of like, here's my ideas, and because we shared a lot of stories in that session as well. We each had stories, we each had ideas, and it generated some good conversations with folks. But, who is this guy up in front of you? Why am I talking to you? I'm not some uniquely qualified individual that can say, here are the exact things that you need to do to be an effective Drupal contributor. I have been in the community for a little bit. I am a lead engineer and owner at Lullabot. Kind of got that from Matt yesterday, but the owner part is because we're now an employee-owned company, so we all own the company. So there's about 60 of us, and we're distributed, no offices, anything like that. And we're all motivated to help in the community, and there's a big culture of that at Lullabot. So in case some of you are new to this community, that there are companies like where I work, and lo like lots of others, Electric Citizen I know is here, and where there is uh, the nerdery, uh, I, I just seeing some folks in the audience, but there are places where there's definitely a culture of wanting to contribute back, to be effective in the community, to be helpful. So I made my first core commit in 2010, and I've been volunteering with this camp since 2011, the first year, as kind of like the project manager, I guess you could call, the first year, and ever since I've been volunteering in different capacities, more or less each year. This year, you know, I sat at the registration desks and I helped read some sessions. I've also organized some big core initiatives, and I'll talk about some of those. But um, another thing, if you look up me on the internet nowadays, you might not wonder if I'm the same person that you're seeing online because I'm a yoga teacher as well and I run a nonprofit or I'm a board chair at a nonprofit where we bring yoga into schools. And it's very different from this, but I actually take a lot of what I learn as a yoga teacher, what I teach as a yoga teacher, into my development. So you might notice some subtle hints of mindfulness, that kind of thing. But I work for Lullabot, and if you're also wondering, uh, the official line is that we're a 100% employee-owned strategy design and Drupal development company that creates large-scale digiting publishing publishing systems with lots of companies like the ones listed on the board. So, yay Lullabot, and we are all marketers when we talk at conferences, so look at me go. And one more thing about Lullabot, is this that we do have 10 hours, like we're 40 hours a week employees, and I just want to be transparent too that we have like 10 hours a week where we're encouraged to contribute back to the community or contribute in other ways and other things that we find might make us better in the 30 hours that were billable. 
So that's very intentional at our company, but it allows me to have time to do things like contribute back. So I, 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 you know, I need to thank Lullabot for that time as well, but also to sort of acknowledge that I know I have more time than other folks and that that is a luxury and uh, that sometimes, you know, sometimes I use that same time to, you know, teach mindfulness classes or talk about mental health at Lullabot. So I use it for all sorts of things, but I, I'm coming here to offer not a complete guide and, but some tips and, you know, as usual, I will, I will encourage folks to read the contribution docs on drupal.org because there are like specific things there's specific official guidance and when owen and i first talked about doing this you know we thought our whole talk could just be like what's to be effective we'll just go read the documentation but you know that's not that's not going to be that useful because anybody can do that so we thought what can we offer but some of our own ideas so if we want to break down the title a little bit, uh, the first word I want to talk about is the contributor, habits of an effective Drupal contributor. So essentially, I would say a contributor is really anyone who wants to, is willing to abide by the Drupal code of conduct. And the code of conduct has ways for guidelines, rules for how we interact in this community, treating each other with respect, not abusing each other, those sorts of things. So we have, you know, again, official guidance that you can follow if you want official guidance, and that we do have to follow, essentially, but basically a contributor could be anyone. And right now, all of you are contributing by coming to a session. You're essentially supporting our camp. You're supporting me. You're participating in our local community. So way to go you. You're already an effective contributor. Or I don't know, maybe you don't think you're an effective contributor, but I would say, in my view, you're already doing it. But So what is the effective part of this talk then? So here's where some of the opinion part starts to come in more strongly. I would say, in my experience, working with folks in the Drupal community, that people are effective when they're not necessarily attached to the results. So if you have really cool ideas about how things should be done, and there are definitely people in this room who have very cool ideas and that have done very cool things, and not everybody always agrees on what that cool thing should be or how we should do it, so we have to talk to each other. And sometimes it doesn't get to be exactly the cool thing that you want. So I would argue, kind of like uh, Tiffany mentioned yesterday, that you can you know, sort of go solo and go alone and you can get things done quickly. Um, but sometimes if you sort of let go of like, oh, it has to be this way and sort of open your eye your mind up to maybe there are other ways to do something that you couldn't be you could be more effective if you're if you're sort of offering your your contribution to the community and and not necessarily feeling like they have to do something with that it's kind of like in my mind like making a contribution to um, a nonprofit organization where you do expect something to, you, you expect that to be sort of used thoughtfully, and I think the Drupal community does a good job of thoughtfully using its contributors and helping guide people in ways that are useful, but you, don't, you can't necessarily say, this is how it has to be, and I'm going to tell you, and therefore you must do it because I made this contribution. But there's other ways you can be effective, and a lot of people, it's a totally legitimate way if, to say, I got credit for that work that I contributed to this thing and somebody recognized me. I mean, that's just a basic human thing, but I mean, I do feel like we can acknowledge that people want to contribute because they want, they want to do something and, they, and some people, and again, it's not everybody, they want, they want to be like up on the stage or they want that thanks or uh, 
there's this one I think is one of the most awesome ceremonies in the Drupal community is when we at Drupal cons we encourage first con first time contributors to go through a sprint and then um, some years we do something where they'll select somebody and Dries will be up on the stage with them and do a live commit of of that person's work right there and I just think that's such a fabulous way to recognize somebody with the founder of the project up there committing your work or web check it in some years it's been but getting credit I think can be a good motivator and you might also be doing things not just for your credit but for your employees credit and the community is set up in a way to allow employers, sponsors to gain recognition for our local Drupal, Twin, City, Twin Cities Drupal camp. We do our best to not be slimy about it, but to recognize that there's a bunch of companies that gave us a bunch of money that helped make this all happen. So I think one thing that we've been talking, or we talked a little bit about yesterday is being a little more formal with understanding how people are contributing. We have one of the main organizers of the camp this year, Dan, who I'd like to acknowledge because he did a ton of work, but we don't necessarily do a fantastic job saying Dan was in charge. Dan was basically leading a lot of things. We didn't have any titles, at least not this year. So, But in future years, maybe we will. Maybe we will be a little bit more and do better in recognizing that these people took on a leadership role, they're volunteers, they made this thing happen, and without people like Dan and lots of others uh, in this room as well, we just, you know, we wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be talking to you. You wouldn't be listening to me. So, so you can do things locally. You can also help out with the, you know, the big initiatives, and that can be a good way to be effective because every year, Dries Boytart, the founder of Drupal Project, gets up on stage in his Dries note and lays out his priorities. Well, people take notice of that. If Dries saying we should do that, that means something. It doesn't mean it's gonna get done, but you can, you can bet that there are a few initiatives going on right now. Like one, we heard a talk, or Joe Schindler gave a talk about like single directory components where this is like another area where there's a lot of excitement around it. It's kind of a big initiative there might be little things that could be improved on. It's not you know, part of the stable core, so that can be a way to be really effective. To be, I mean, you might have a bug that is causing you a ton of pain with your client and you need it fixed in some contrib module, and that's a very different proposition. Like, you can be effective for your client or you can upload a patch and that can be effective, but you, know, you can also be effective with these big initiatives. And I have some experience in that. You don't have to be the world-class best programmer in the world. When the configuration management initiative was going on, some of the people were getting burnt out. And I happened to be sitting at a table with XJM and she said, Matthew, we really need somebody to help lead this and get it over the finish line. I said, sure, whatever. I like the idea of a big initiative. Personally, like configuration system, Everybody, only people only talked about a CMI back then, but CMI, you know, that's a big thing. People know they want that. They're, they hate using features and they want this and I want to help with that. That's a big thing. So maybe you have something that you want to help with. So what did I do? You know, I ran meetings. I, I uh, helped some issues. I did a little coding. We had a lot of real technical discussions once in a while, but for the most part, I was just like out there in the community talking about it. Here's the current status. Everybody wanted to know, well, how's it going? Is it going to get in by Drupal 8? You know, that kind of thing. So I, I made a little website and some blog posts and talked about the latest principles and whatever. Some of it was just trying to, I spent a lot of time trying to take these really complex tasks and, and explain it to people, like why this is going to be useful going forward, because people were really curious. Those were the sessions, by the way. Every time I gave one of those talks, packed room, fullest room, sometimes they would tell me after DrupalCon. That was the biggest session at the whole conference, aside from the keynotes. Again, like sometimes people just want really specific information. That's a good way to help out. Uh, Olivero is another one that I helped sort of lead. Mike, Mike Herschel was my colleague. I worked with him on a whole bunch of 
projects um, for Lullabot with clients, and he, he was super dedicated to wanting to do this with another one of our, our colleagues, uh, and I'm blanking on, I want to say Petra, but I feel like that's, pardon? Putra. Putra. <laughs> I said the wrong name. Putra. And Mike came up with this idea, let's have a new theme in core. And nobody wants to keep dealing with Bartik, or, I mean, there's nothing wrong with Bartik, but people want to, people are, you know, they want something more modern looking. So a bunch of people from Lullabot got involved. There was, this was one where it was really easy to be useful because Lullabot had a bunch of, you know, we all have our contribution time. A bunch of us decided, let's focus on this. Let's try and get it over the line. Big initiative, right? But if if six people from Lullabot come to Dries and say, we want to do this, and we've talked to everybody, and we've talked to all the accessibility folks, and we have a design team, and they've came up with these designs, and we have project managers, and we have you know, lots of people who want to work on it, people will take note. So you want to be effective? That's another great way to be effective. Tiffany mentioned this also in her keynote, so I guess I'm sort of repeating that if you were listening yesterday, that sometimes it's good to you know, get with a small group of people and just go for something. And it could be big, but if all of this talk of big, it doesn't have to be big, you know? I have, I have a meditation podcast called Pretty Good Meditation. And I feel like with your Drupal contributions, Whatever they are, they don't have to be great, you know? They can be pretty good. And if they're not great, somebody will help you make it great, you know? If you think, if you, you know, sometimes it's just opening that issue. Sometimes it's just, sometimes they need somebody super technical to be like, no, that is not how you do this because that will cause really bad thing X. So it doesn't have to be a big thing. So I don't want to get too hung up on the big things, but I will say that can be a good, effective way, in my opinion, my experience, my uh, interactions with others, people that get to be part of those big initiatives. Uh, another one that comes to mind is the multilingual initiative. I, was, I got really involved with that when Gabor stepped up and said, I'm going to help lead that. Lots of people were involved with that. There was a lot of, we had to talk between the configuration and the multilingual. There was a lot of overlap there. He was really good at motivating people. And he'd have these, you know, like meet, planning meetings with like 20 people showing up. And he had a website that was all about Drupal 8 multilingual. So I created Drupal 8, you know, configuration. <laughs> so like I just did what Gabor did, but Maybe not as well. I don't know. Maybe he, he's, maybe he was more motivational. But configuration was a hard thing to get people motivated for, by the way, because it was so technical, because most people just didn't get it, and it was really a developer thing. So speaking of developer things, in general, I do feel like a great way to be effective is to be human, you know, to remember when you're interacting with people that yes, you have to abide by the Drupal con code of conduct. That's sort of a minimum. But some of the people I, who I feel like are really good are just like really nice people. Like you, like you want to work with them. You want to help them. Like Mike Herschel was just this guy that I worked with, and I was like, dang, he's doing all this work. I just want to help him. I feel like he's giving to the community. I want to give back to the community. Maybe it's a very different reason too, Mike might have been had a completely different motivations. I, I'm motivated a lot of times. I have stickers here from the Free Software Foundation because I'm a big believer in free software. So like projects in the Drupal community that are like basically all free software, all GPL code, I get more motivated by that than some of the other initiatives that might be less free software oriented. I'll, I'll just say it like that. All right, so abide by the code of conduct. But also, again, the, the human part, like being in issue queues, interacting with people, people have, we all disagree on, like we disagree on how a Drupal Camp Twin Cities should be, like what room, what venue, how much food we should have. Should we have drinks? Should we have too much of this or that? Like we have all kinds of, just 
recognizing people have all sorts of different perspectives, all sorts of needs, rather than, you know, being super tied to your particular perspective. I think a lot of people get stuff done, especially in our community, when they say, hey, let's work, let's just work together and try and figure out what works, you know? Maybe it's just like, I don't want to let this thing die. Maybe it's some other goal that they have for why they're working on it. But I think in general, if you start with assuming positive intent, that can be beneficial. Not everybody has positive intent. Intent. There are people that are trying to just piss you off. And, but a lot of times, especially like when dealing with people online, the bigger Drupal community, people don't assume. Like they read something and they're like, what the heck? Why did they? You know, and then we get into the, the flame wars. I'm also, I'm, I'm like a temp, I'm like a not quite official full group member of the community working group where there, there's a community working group and those people are all official now, I guess. Um, but I'm not, I'm, I'm ramping up, I guess, to be that. But there's a group of people that I'm going to be a part of, or I hope I'll be a part of, that, that help manage some of that in the community, but also like each of us individually, just like out, <clears throat> being out there, being nice, being friendly with each other. That's a big reason, I think, why Drupal's been successful and how people are effective in getting done is like, huh. You know, that doesn't make sense why you did that, but I bet there's some reason for you, you know, let's talk about it, whatever, if, especially if we're in person. And be uh, inclusive, allowing not just people that look like us, <laughs> inviting others from, you know, inviting other people that we think might have something to add, um, helping, helping to do I'll put it this way, like I'll, I'll use this camp as another example, is like when we are planning this camp, we try and do so in a transparent fa manner. We add tickets on, or Dan literally was the guy who was adding, I keep talking to Dan, but I'm, I'm trying to talk about like real stories. You want me to shut up? No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> We're like, we, we created, you know, we created an, an issue. We put a gen, he put agendas out like on Drupal.org so people can see like, it's in, it's not like we're in the smoky back room. We're out there. Like we're trying to, we're trying to let people know like, hey, you can join too. We need help. Some of us have been doing this for 12 years and we need some more faces. So like, you know, being inclusive can be hard, but you know, you can you can do that, and I do this all the time too. Where I just sort of pause, like when we're when we're thinking about how I want to contribute. Wait a second, how do I want to contribute? And we we could try it right now. You could just sit there in your chair. You could even close your eyes and just think, what would give me joy? Did I come here thinking I want to have a, make a big difference? Was it just this like I'm in the wrong room and I don't know what would give me joy and I haven't thought about it? You know, maybe whatever it is, like just sort of pausing, not just I'm just going to keep going, going, going. Just another session. Just another issue. Just another patch. Just another happy client, whatever it is, just like pausing, being like, what, what would really like be, what would be something that would really make me feel good if I did that to contribute back to this community? So, we do spend a lot of time in the issue queues and people, I'm not sure, how many of you are like totally new to the Drupal community and we have some, okay, we have, so our issue queue system is unique in the world. Nobody else has one that's quite like ours. It's also the envy of many other com communities. So we have, you know, we have an issue queue that looks like a GitLab or GitHub issue queue or a Jira tickets, maybe a little bit, maybe a little older looking or whatever, but it tracks bugs, features, documentation, but we also use it for event organizing, 
bigger discussions, meta tickets, meta initiatives get planned there. And when you're in the issue queue and you're writing stuff, you know, it's okay that we disagree. It's okay to say no. Those kinds of things you'll hear a lot. It can be good to remember, you know, a lot of, a lot of people in our community have imposter syndrome. I mean, gosh, I certainly did when I started. Like, holy cow, like that person really, you know. I would, I work with Dave, a guy named Dave Reed who maintains, like, I don't know how many million modules. He has sessions sometimes at DrupalCon where he's, like, handing out maintainership cards. I need a maintainer of this because I maintain 75 modules or whatever, and, you know, I work with him. It, but you run into people like that in the community. I was feeling that way a little bit. I'm going to call out Matt Glamen yesterday and his ability to talk about the innards of Drupal. Like there are some really smart people and sometimes people just feel, especially like if you're a developer, uh, you can even feel more of that. Sometimes project managers feel imposter syndrome because they're like, I don't get this Drupal thing. I'm just trying to figure this out. I want to help, but I have no idea how it works. All these develop, you know, so everybody I've found in those positions can feel that way and a lot of people do so still feel that way you know sometimes i'm like am i really worthy of being a lead engineer i love you know i'll be like do people think i'm something that i'm not you know we all we all feel that whatever whatever your role is i'm sure so but in general, though, like in issue queues, there's lots of folks that are there because they want to improve the software, because they want to improve the community, because they want to help, they want to make it better. And, it, and a thing that I think some people get hung up on is that there are invisible priorities in these issue queues that you don't always see. It's not clear, like, why why they didn't commit your patch you know and so that's why a little bit of like understanding talking to real humans to kind of understand like why is nobody doing like this module seems like it's used by so many people and nobody even responds to anything but there are other priorities sometimes it's because of those big initiatives because somebody was they was they were working on that and now the communities went a completely different way and that thing that you thought everybody using is maybe not as cool or whatever else there's when you're in the issue queue it can be useful to remember just that not everybody has the same priorities as you and certainly sometimes there's a big difference between core initiatives like like if you're contributing to something that is that big core thing versus a contrib issue you know that it's you're, it's just going to be it can be worlds of difference between how many people will see that and, and and even like within the core space you know if you're like working really hard on the help module or something or if you're working really hard on some other module that everybody just sort of knows that module is going to be going away but nobody's been really good about publicizing it you, you can, might even be thinking, I'm working on core, and but still nobody's paying attention to this, and this tour module should really work a different way, or whatever it is. Like, what happened to that overlay thing, or something? There might be, there just might be some priorities where, you know, if you're in a, a contrib issue, you if you're maintaining a, con, a contrib module that lots of folks use, you really do, you can, you can kind of have all the power to decide <laughs> You know what you're going to commit or not if you're working in core it can be a really different situation so in general i mean a big theme here is just finding ways that are meaningful to you like what again what would be like hmm i would feel really good if i did that or like this thing really bugs me or i see lots of people struggling with this thing i would like to like if i fix that and those people didn't have to suffer like dang I feel good so it could take a little like reflection not just here's the documentation here's how you contribute you know um, I I like to write articles you know I have an academic background and I write all kinds of articles sometimes on lullabot.com sometimes on my own website it's another way that you can be 
you can you can uh, contribute back to the community. The Drupal Planet is a feed, an RSS feed that's a lot of fo folks follow, and uh, like I wrote this article and a few others where they were a little bit critical of some of the. You know, it wasn't just like a, yay, Drupal's the best, and everybody should buy it, and be excited for this next feature. It was more like, we have a way of talking about Drupal that makes us think that this thing is a thing, and like, maybe, and some of it was like, well, Dries says this, but here he says this, and I, you know, I kind of picked things apart, and then Dries contacted me, and he's like, wow, your article had some, had some ideas in there, like, that maybe we should talk about, and it went in a completely different direction, but you could write an article with somebody else. In this case, I wrote an article with Dries where we looked at a bunch of uh, data about commit credits that I'm going to talk about in a moment, but the point I want to make is that's another way you can contribute, writing articles. Is, is like If you're not a developer, write articles. Talk about Drupal. Talk about how awesome it is. Talk about how something doesn't make sense in a meaningful friendly way that you think might be beneficial. There's lots of ways to write out, you know, you probably know a lot of these. These might be the straightforward ones. You could serve on the board, you could write codes, you can, you can just contribute documentation pretty easily if you figure things out. You can attend an event, check mark, you all did it. You uh, could volunteer here if you want, again. We need more volunteers to help out with this community if we want this community to keep to keep cruising along. And you know, and then then we can pause and realize it doesn't have to be great. Eh, pretty good. So let me talk a little bit about the credit system because this is another thing that's completely unique to the Drupal community. And I can say this with some authority because I've talked about it at a lot of other big open source conferences with a lot of, a lot of other big groups, all things open and um, some, so i blanking on the names right now, but I've talked to a lot of people in other communities that are like, you, how, you do you what? You give people credit? Like, how does that work? Well, the Drupal community decided they wanted a way to recognize these contributions unique as I mentioned and basically just we hand out credits everybody gets a credit you want a credit and that I mean that, that's, that might seem like what it is a little bit like we're just everybody gets a credit everybody gets a credit but there's a lot of a lot of thought that has gone into this but you know, the technical nuts and bolts is like People in the community, and this is the data that Dries and I have analyzed and have looked at over the years, by the way, is like you can contribute as a volunteer. That's the top checkbox. You can contribute just as, your, as yourself, like I'm volunteering, and um, that's it. And you could also contribute like I could be mtift at Lullabot, or I could be like... I am MTIFT at Lullabot for the University of Massachusetts Amherst. And all of those people could basically get credit when I'm working. So like the person that's paying my employer. So that's what this whole idea of at organization for customer. But that customer can be different things. Like Hestinet is Tim, Tim Lanen, and uh, he works at the Drupal Association and their customers aren't the same as like uh, an agency's customers. So people can interpret this different ways. But it's also unique and interesting to a lot of people that you can do both contribute, contributing for your company but also volunteering at the same time. So, for example, I used to work with uh, one of the customers for Lullabot was Georgia Public Broadcasting. And I worked for eight years at Wisconsin Public Radio and I was a big public radio guy so I would do work for Georgia Public Broadcasting during the day on behalf of Lullabot, who was my employer. But then I'd also do a little more stuff. I'd be like, oh, I'm going to improve this NPR module because it'll be beneficial. So some, of it, some aspects of one issue might be volunteering or not. And surprisingly, a lot of people in the Drupal community always check that volunteering box whenever they're doing stuff as well. Um, 
I don't know if I should call out other pe- I won't call out other people, but I know other people have told me they always check that because they're most of their evenings they just love to do Drupal stuff too, so they're always like I'm volunteering and volunteering. But we do know based on some of the data and how people check those boxes that like more it started off, you know, like six years ago, like half the half the contributions were sponsored. Like a lot of people in the community we realized were getting paid to be there, and that number has just gone up in the past seven years since we've been doing that. We have these unique tools in our UI about how we can figure out who gets credit in an issue. Did they contribute a patch? Did they upload a file? Did they take some screenshots? Did they do a code review? And you can kind of go through if you're managing a module and decide, like a person has to intervene. This is another thing that kind of blows people's minds in other communities, that we sort of decide not by using an algorithm, but like, yeah, this person helped out a lot on this, or this person did a little bit. They just said, no, we should probably go in this direction, but that was hugely influential in how this thing got solved. So therefore, check, 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 however, creates the commit message. That's for the people that are, you know, more often than not writing code, committing in that way. But it can be other things. Oh, there is the thing I mentioned before. I attended a planning meeting, you know, on this date. And I was there with these other people, you know. And we get credit for doing that. I got a credit for that, you know. So it's a way to recognize, to say, hey, thanks. This is worth it. So we have a list of all sorts of things that you can get credit for. This is kind of weird to people, too. They're like, because, like, you speak at a DrupalCon, too. They'll make an issue for you. You get credit or whatever. They make it, like, sometimes per day. Sometimes they did it, like, all of the speakers on one issue, but just give them all credit. Uh, but people, people, some people do this. Some people don't, don't use it at all. Uh, you can appear on a podcast. Um, and, and so, like, every time Talking Drupal does a podcast... You know, they give the people credit because they're contributing back to the community. Our community has said, yeah, look, we're not like hiding the fact they're not gaming the system. They're saying, we recorded a podcast. We think it's helpful to people in the Drupal community. Let's give them some credit for doing that for the effort. So as a result, uh, you can, individuals have their own Profile pages that shows a lot of the recent contributions. Amy June, she's here. This is just one we've used in a, I've used in a lot of presentations in the past. But uh, I don't know why we selected Amy June, other than like she was doing a lot of work and she won the uh, Aaron Winborn Award. And she was a person who just jumped in and just started contributing, started getting credit, started making things happen. But also because we have the organizational checkbox, then organizations get credit, like Lullabot, Loves, you know? They, our business, lots of you probably know, like agency business, a lot of businesses place a lot of emphasis on, on getting somewhere, you know, on that marketplace page. And there's a lot of thought and effort and discussion and controversy about how that should all work. I've been, I've seen, I've seen it on the public forums. I've been in some of the back, the, the discussions about how the APIs or how the algorithm works and all of that. And I do feel like there's a lot of good thought and effort and that we have a good system that does a pretty good job. And there are a few times where we kind of blew it where people spent a lot of time getting their organization moved up and then we changed the algorithm and then suddenly like their organization went down and it was really demoralizing for a few people. Some people at this conference too, I know, that worked really hard, did their best because they wanted credit, they did it for their organization. So it's an imperfect system. It's a human system, but the people are doing a good job. And I started attending a lot of meetings of the community health analytics open source software uh, group. It's a part, it's a group that's part of the Linux Foundation, but they publish um, community they metrics related to me- measuring community health. So it's a lot of community organizers and academics and folks like that. 
I started coming to the the areas for the evolution working group, which was how to evolve a community. Told them about the Drupal way of doing things. They're like, whoa. Never heard of that in anywhere else before. We should make we should turn that into like our model for how we do contribution attribution. And I got that, you know, I, I got that into the metrics. So if you go to the the chaos, this is one of the metrics by how like academics would measure and how we're trying we're trying to get this into GitLab and then GitHub and other and other uh, ways of uh, measuring code contributions to help recognize people. So it's not just looking at code, lines of code, things like that. And again, some people cheat the system, some people do things to manipulate it. But I have all kinds of ideas, I've written all sorts of articles and whatnot. If you want more, there's a link here. I'll have a link to these slides at the end. You can, believe me, <laughs> I could say even more about the subject. You might be getting tired already of hearing me talk, but I can say a lot more if you want to read or watch more talks of me. Woohoo! Uh, it feels like I'm tooting my horn, but I am just trying to, to say, like, here, if any of this stuff interests you, I've kind of gone deep on a lot of these things, like leaderboards and whatnot, but if you're looking for habits, you might say, here's a good list, though. Prioritize your impact. If you want to do it, if you want to get something done, we're better together. That we want to try and do things that are really good, strive for excellence, treat each other nicely, enjoy what you do. Like this could be a good list. It all it also happens to be the Drupal values from the values and principles. So that might have been a quicker talk. Here, just look at the values, do those things. That, those seem like good habits. Like if you're doing everything, thinking about like what would make, what would be a good way to contribute, that'd be a way to do it. Um, but there's so many other ways to do this, but I'm just, we have a couple minutes. If anybody would like to ask questions or if there's a proud moment of contributing or another idea you want to share, yeah. So Matthew, I've got a culture question especially for us newer folks in the, like trying to contribute. Mm -hmm. uh, there have been times when I've seen you know, in modules that are pretty well developed that it's like, boy, I really would have helped. This was this part was confusing, these instructions. Our, a screenshot would have been so helpful for this, this screen to show how that's configured. Uh, is it safe for us to just add that or culturally are there like would you need to contact the the modules maintainer first before you like just kind of introduce yourself before getting involved yeah so I'll just for the recording the question is basically if i if i have a suggestion for how to make documentation for a module better or some other suggestion for a module because yeah, we can just edit it yeah so <laughs> you um i would say if you want to be safe if you want to be nice you could open an issue and say i think we could add this to the documentation and then you know add the text you think you should add 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 the um image that would be one way to go about it like super open com you know it could become a conversation or something like that um i mean it, it sort of depends on, on the particular modules community and how they do things, some are really are really devoted to like we open an issue and then that leads to choices. Others where it's just like somebody that's just maintaining it and it's one of 50 modules that they maintain. If you just contact them maybe on Slack, you might just say, hey, I have, can I, you mind if I add some screenshots to make your documentation better? I would think that the vast majority of folks would say, go for it, please, you know, help me out. And and then, you know, you could just do it, in other words. But I don't know that there is a one way of, of doing that. Does anybody else who maintains modules have an idea? I would say, if you're new and feeling comfortable, because I remember 10 years ago feeling that way, open the issue, like, I think this would be great. Now, a week later, that person's busy, like me, doesn't see new issues, like, Ping and Slack. Like, that's what I would do. We did an IRC of the day. And I was like, hey, I was thinking about this. Like, oh, I didn't see it because a thousand things happening. 
if someone came to me and said, I want to write the documentation, put some screenshots, I'd be like, do it. But I also understand there's that very, you want like the okay of like, hey, I'm not just some random person that's going to change a bunch of stuff. Do that, and like, if there's time, just like give the nudge. And if it gets as quiet after that, just be like, well, maybe they're not doing this anymore, and just say, maybe find something else. Or then just say, like, well, I've waited two weeks. I'm just going to do it and ask for forgiveness later. If you don't like it, pick it up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, somebody can go revert it. So, like, if you want to kind of dip your toes and just be like, open the issue, maybe nudge on Slack, and it's dead sense, like, well, I'm just going to go for it. And, well, somebody on the internet gets mad, oh, well. I guess that's where it ties into, you know, assume good intent. Yeah. yeah. You know, we're trying to help them. Get if the better. person gets mad and they didn't assume good intent, then be like, maybe they're in burnout, maybe there's something else, but like, well, I think I did good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel like as long as you, if you've really kind of thought about it, maybe, I mean, like if you've searched the issue or if you've maybe even searched Slack or something, like has anybody else ever mentioned this thing I'm thinking about doing? And nobody's ever mentioned it, and there's not like some clear decision to not do it that's public. Then, my goodness, if then I would just say in most cases you could just do it, and most people will probably be fine. But you have to kind of know some of those modules though, because some people really do. They, you can get a sense if you read through a few issues, and they're then they're like shutting things down, like nope, not doing that, don't want this mucks up the page or whatever. Yeah, it's a human interaction. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah? I'm going to pull the little Uno reverse card on you here and sure. ask, as an, someone off the Drupal Island that does open source projects and maintains open source projects, what do you think would be one thing, your, your top thing, that smaller open source projects could take from how Drupal does things to encourage, you know, activity and community and you know in their projects. If if it's big enough where you could have a local community with in person meetups, I think the the those meetings where we have first time contributor instructions where you teach people you know, person to person, how to be an effective contributor, like we do at Drupal cons. I think that that's one thing that we do really well, and that would be, you know, that I would that would be one easy thing. Yeah. But I would also say finding some some method to recognize contribution is huge because I think a lot of people make contribute like they work really hard at stuff and then nobody ever says thank you so like the easier version of that is just to like make sure that you have somebody in the community who's who's like thanking people for doing awesome work even using something like the all contributors bot on github that automatically brings even non-code contributions into the readme <clears throat> and recognizes people something like that yeah it really I mean it does really commit depend on the community yeah. but for, for for in general I think like that recognition thing yeah. I think that really motivates people we have so many people that start with the Drupal community they especially if they go to a Drupal con and they have that first commit mm -hmm. they're they can be hooked for life yeah. you know those people that were raising their hands like me you know had experiences like that or somebody like paid attention mm -hmm. but now I see we're way over time, even though that clock, I think that clock's fast, but I want to respect your time. I'm sorry for going a little over, but uh, thank you. Happy to answer questions. After. <laughs>